So let's get started. Um, da, da, da. Uh, yeah, I'm the happy one who present the last chapter, uh, rewriting R code in C++. Hi, Lila. Um, so why we should even care about it? The main thing is, as we talked in the previous chapters, uh, mainly performance. And as we talked in the previous chapters, uh, if you do something for performance, you also should think first about it if it's even worth it. So yes, it can be worth to speed up your algorithm, but if, if it doesn't matter overall, you shouldn't do it. But overall, C++ is a really good way to uh, make more performant um, code especially uh, for iterations which depend on the previous outcome, uh, which cannot be vectorized. In the book, he presents us with the RCPP package. So that's from Dirk Edelbeutel, Bittel, Bittel, don't know how you call him. And that's a really, really nice tool because it allows allows us to really work um, R and C++, they, they really fit good together because you could anyway write C++ code and use it. But thanks to this package, you, it, it allows you to connect it really easy, especially if you're writing packages and stuff like this. Um, overall, it's a simple package you would install like a, any other package and you only have one pre requisite and that's a working compiler in C++. If you load the package, you can straight away write a C++ code. So that's this function is exported from the RCDB package. And inside I can define a string and the string itself, this one is a C++ function. And if I write this uh, with the function I pull to string, it's already, so if I want this, it's available in our R environment. As you can see here, if I look at the function, it directs us to a pointer, so it's in the memory of the function. And we call, can call it in R, so that's really easy and really cool. Um, for the people who never looked at the C++ um, code, that's more or less the main difference, how you structure a function. Above you see a simple, very simple uh, function in R, which declares an integer and returns it. And below you would see the same function, but in C++. So the main difference is we don't assign anything in C++. We just name it and then do the brackets. And that's a function. The second big point is that um, C++ is type correct. So you, you have to predefine the, here the output or variable types. So you always have to say, okay, that's an integer, that's a string, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think that's really good because lots of um, mistakes, et cetera, coming from um, or bugs uh, coming from, if you get an input, which should not be, which is not the correct type. So that's type correct here. Uh, one big thing which I, I every time forget is you have to use a semicolon to terminate every uh, statement. And that was big then also common in JavaScript, but you don't need it anymore there. So yeah, I think it's still common in PHP, but I'm not sure. Okay, um, thanks to the RCCP package, we also have types in C++, which are more or less the same as in R. So we have a character in R, a string in C++, and a character vector in in C++. So that's what I meant with 
uh, it works really good together because you can simply call the function with, with a character vector and it's also a character vector in C++. <clears throat> I said it's mainly about speed. Um, in the book, he has written a sum summary function. Um, I have written a product function, so more or less it's the same. And at the top, it's a basic uh, product function in R, and below is the same function in C++. Um, I don't walk through about all, I just want to see you how they compare, because um, we also have a product function in base R implemented, implemented. And if we compare all three of this in a benchmark, <clears throat> we see that the simple C++ loop is close to um, the very optimized product function R. So what, what I want to show you here is simply that C++ loops are really performant. And that was a really simple loop which I have written here. Um, and it's already really fast. So C++ is really <clears throat> um, fast for loops, but as I said at the beginning, is it worth the hassle? You know, <clears throat> Hartley has a has a, a quote in which he says, "Yeah, he would need to run it two hundred thousand times." <clears throat> um, I have written here. A, more sophisticated code, which calculates this quote based on my example. So actually my, 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 my C code is seven times faster, but it's only 20.9 uh, micro, microseconds. Um, and I would need to run it a lot of times to make it worthwhile. So that, that what, what I wanted to say is, it's cool that it's quicker, but do we even need to care about 20 microseconds? Probably not. Um, with the RCCP package, you can write um, C++ code in R. But actually what you want to do is to use standalone C++ files. Uh, there's a function source CCP, CTP, and you can simply load your C++ functions. Uh, I talk about this later. Um, for R Markdown users, so if, if you are a happy R Markdown user, you can also uh, set the engine for each block as C++, thanks to he who he, how it's ever called, he's awesome guy. Um, and what R Markdown does is he compiles your code block into a C++ file and then source it. So if you, if you run an R Markdown file with C++, um, you will see this and that's really great. I also do this in this example. So actually you, you don't see it, but at the top here, it, it calls RCPP at the, as engine and cage two is just that I don't uh, need to compile it every time I want it. Uh, and that's more or less a standalone uh, C++ um, code piece. Um, I don't go into detail, uh, but um, a little bit, first of all, the hash, it's no comment in C++, that's uh, for header imports. So what I do here is include the RCCP C++ header, because this allows us to use um, stuff like numeric vector, which is normally not available in C++. Um, this one is a comment actually. So the double forward slash is a comment in C++. And this, this comment here is a special. If you write this before your function in C++, the RCPP package will know that this function should be exported 
into your R environment. Um, yeah, the function itself. And then you can also write the other way around. So at the bottom here, if you write um, a comment like this, so a forward slash star 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 R and forward slash, you can write R code in C++. So yeah, you shouldn't do it, just separate all your code, but it's possible actually. Um, yeah. Oh no, one back. What you also see here, I didn't talk about the namespace. The namespace is something that you don't have to use um, before that stuff RCBB. So it all what's in the in the uh, in the header file will be exported, and we can directly exit access it in our environment. This one is a standard library, and we access it like um, like in R with packages. You have to use the double colon thing. So the max function is exported from the uh, standard library. I think- Wait, Where are you writing this? This is not an R, right? That's C++. Yeah, this is all C++, okay. So how are we able to get the namespace? Uh, what do you mean? I don't understand how you were able so like, let's say you were, you were writing just like C++ in like Visual Studio Code. How did you get the namespace for R, the package, RCCP package into your- like, Exactly like this. So the, it it's, in, it's included out. in the header. Oh, wait. No, no, no. no that's, that's what I said. That's, that's hash is no comment. Oh. That's in, in, in C++ forward slash is a comment. So what does the pound sign do? Uh, I don't know the exact thing, but you have to use it before you are including headers. So okay, so but where? Okay, so so rccp dot h in brackets. That's how does it know where to find the? Uh, that's something like you would write in our library rccp. Yeah, but what, how does it know one where to find it? Is it in the same like yeah. directory? So, and what is dot h? Yeah, so h stands for header file. That's that's just like a definition file in RCCP in C plus uh, plus. Where it knows where it lives, uh, that happens when you install the RCCP RCPP package in R. It automatically links uh, this to your C plus plus library. Like yeah. when you when you install an R package, it gets automatically installed into your uh, library package somewhere on your yeah. uh, on your yeah. R folder. Yeah. 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 Just like and, in R, and, where we yeah. use library yeah. library so so uh, it um, download the <clears throat> package and we can use it. So this is the same with C plus plus hash include is something like library and put the some stuff like that. Oh, but this is so this is you're writing the C in R where it can find it knows where to find. Because I'm thinking like if you were writing this isolated, how would it know where to find? Yeah, uh it the compiler knows it. So uh C is a compiler language, and before you can run C code, you have to compile it. And as I said, as prerequisite for the RCPP package, you must have a compiler installed. So you can, you have to first install a C++ compiler and then install the RCPP package in R and it automatically links this library to your compiler. Oh, got you, okay. Uh, it's actually not always that simple. For example, I had to hard link this, um, this header oh. file, but yeah, but you can look it up. But overall, it should work out of the yeah. Especially if you write it in um, in R Markdown, thanks thanks to um, yeah, mm -hmm. thanks to R Markdown, it's already included and that it knows everything where your mm -hmm. um, okay. compiler is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, 
here, Hannes, where you said this double um, slash is comment. Is this really comment here? Yeah, it's it's a comment. It's really a comment, but it will get picked up by the RCCP package. Yeah. In 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 R because that's a special for him, and he knows everything after this. He needs to export into R. So it's, mm. it yeah, I it's a special case, but yeah, you write comments like this. You only need one forward slash actually. But yeah, it's a comment in, in C++. But I, I want to go quickly to, uh, without explaining too much C++, and at the end, I, I would think we do a live coding of one C++ example, which we can take slower to understand maybe a little bit more about C++. Um, yeah, what I wanted to say is here, the standard library, which is automatically exported, is something like base, uh, double colon, double colon in R that's automatically in your environment. It's the same with the standard library. And the standard library has a lot of um, already included function and, and, and um, libraries, et cetera, et cetera. That means if you are looking for an algorithm, you should look in the standard C library and there's already a lot in there. Thanks to the RC BB package, as I said, we also have data frame environment language symbol in C++ available. Also, if you uh, give um, an object from R to C++, um, C++ will know the class on it. So example, this would be a C++ code. And if I uh, say object inherits, LM, I can check if this object has the class of linear model. So that's really good. And that's what I meant with they play, they fit perfectly together. I can have an output of a LM function, a linear model in R, give it, give it to C plus, my C++ function, and the C++ function knows that it's a uh, linear model. So that's really great. One big catch, which also talks in the book, is missing values. As we know, missing values give us a lot of headache in lots of cases. A problem here is that uh, C++ and R differently think about NAs. Start with an integer. If I do it in C++, an integer and plus one, it will give me a number. And that number is the smallest integer plus one because NA will be the smallest integer. So you have to think about it. If you write any code and you calculate with it, it could trigger some big mistakes because NA is not nothing. Uh, for doubles, you should use NAN in C++. That's also common in other languages. String works perfectly fine because that's only from our CPP package. And here the biggest catch where I thought like, oh, is a Boolean values or logical values. Because R knows true, false, and a C++ only knows true and false. And if you have a NA value and give it to C++, it will be true. So that's why uh, Hartley says you always should use uh, integer for safekeeping. Uh, vectors work with the special cases like we would expect in R where you also can define the uh, specific NAs. But yeah, uh, you should be careful about stuff like this. So it could really break your code or not break your code. You could get uh, false answers. Uh, yeah, here we can talk a little bit slower. That's an example where we I wanted to use data frame, a data frame. Um, as before, I include the header and using the namespace. And this special comment exports these functions. So in R, I can call the function row sum C. What I have written here is a simple function which calculates a row sum and adds it to my data frame. 
First of all, you have to define what's the output of the function. I want it to be a data frame. So the return output of this function will be a data frame. The input is also a data frame. Then I uh, grab the rows and columns of the data frame. There are defined functions for this. So it arrows the f and rows, the f size. Then I predefine a result vector, more or less the same as you would do in, uh, in R actually. Uh, the rows here will, will create a numeric vector, which is the same size as my rows. Actually in C++, you, if, if you don't predefine the output size, it will still be really fast. So that's not the same problem as in, uh, in R. What I then do is loop over the rows. Um, maybe some are familiar with this kind of loop. Um, first, you have to define your uh, starting point, uh, state starting object, where I define it as row is zero. Then the middle part is the condition. I loop as long row is smaller as rows, as my data form rows. And the last part is uh, how you increment your row. And the plus plus row is the same as you would do row is, uh, equals to row plus one. So that's a shorthand for uh, plus one. Okay, then I define a, a temporal variable. I, I loop over the columns, calculate it, push it into my result. At the end of it, I push it into my data frame with a pushback function. It's also available in, in, in C++. I push in the result vector and name it row sum. Because C++ don't know about data frames, this will convert to at least. So before I return it, I have to call data frame and then my variable. Uh, but, 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 yeah. If you compile this and load it with R C C B B package, you can call it in R row sum C. I throw in a data frame and look at the result. I get a row sum, so a, a column sum. No, yeah, row sum. This function took me a rather long time, and I don't like to admit it, but yeah. <laughs> so the standard template library is really good. If you cannot find your algorithm, there's the boost package, and the boost package is really or the boost libraries are peer reviewed code. And that there's a lot in there. So normally you should find what you are needing in there. Uh, C++ is rather old, which is good and not. And if you want to have new newer features of the 2011 C++, you have to write this comment like this. That's again, a special case. RCBB knows if you have this comment, it will load uh, C++ 2011 function, uh, features. Overall, it has a lot of uh, new features like you can, you don't need to write int, string, etc. You could use auto if you don't know the output, different loop styles, etc., etc. We will do one function in the live coding. Yeah, he has a boost and uh, iterate as example. Uh, we will don't do this. Yeah, so <clears throat> overall, Hartley also says this, we, you should use the standard library algorithms or boost because um, makes the intent of your code more clear and helping to make it more readable and more maintainable. Okay, uh, intent of your code more clear. It depends on your knowledge, I would say. I think it's it's the same as an R when, when you sometimes help someone, it's easier for them to understand if you write a simple loop and not something special like a map. For me, map was always really difficult to understand and it's more easy if you write a loop and here it's the same. So he also gives a, 
um, example which calculates the interval and and um, it's the same for ggplot breakpoints. So that is more or less a function like this. And he uses uh, different uh, algorithms, a different loop style, et cetera, et cetera. It runs, but if it's more understandable, as I said, it depends on your knowledge. Yes, it's clear. I, I know the code and I can read it really quick, but not for everyone, I would say. Yeah, there are also some advanced data structures, especially unordered set and unordered map, because they are really efficient for hash maps. So that's if, for example, if you are in genetics or some big data, hash maps are really useful if you are searching big parts in a haystack or something like this, because they're really efficient search tools. Um, he talks about case studies, which also lots of them were made by Dirk Edelbüttel, and they're really good, but I couldn't understand the math behind it. <laughs> so it, the, the, the code was really nice, but I couldn't understand why you would need that math. But yeah, yeah. so if you didn't have, you should look them up. They are really great. Um, I also mentioned one of the really big um, use cases of uh, the RCPP package is when you're writing packages, because you would need um, a compiler, but the end user who uses your uh, package don't need anything to know about C++ and don't need any prerequisites. He can just work with that package and that's really great. And as we know, lots, lots of the big packages like in machine learning and stuff like this are written in C++. You can also set up a skeleton folder interface with the use this package. And there's a, a really good vignet about the RCPP package also written from Edelbüttel. Um, there's a quick ref which did help me a lot, where there are just small code snippets like this. So that's more or less a cheat set, and that's really good. And the FAQ where stuff uh, were frequent, yeah, self-explanatory, I would say. And he also mentioned a few um, read ups which you could use. Um, I jumped over a lot of um things in this chapter because i don't know if you have read read it it it's really long and it has a lot of um use cases in there so but it should give you a nice um overview and i don't know how long it me it took me the presentation but now i would do some live coding of at least one example i would say So everyone on board on a live example or? Okay. Um, okay. So you're gonna yeah. use RStudio? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't remember when I last time used RStudio. So. <laughs> um, you probably write a simple. Are you using pig 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 y or something like that? That um, gives you like um, when you type in your command prompt, I can see that it's predicting. Oh, next. it's called. Um, ZS, oh, ZSS. Called? Yeah, and then a package. I can't remember what it is. Um, I think it's oh my oh my CSS. ZSS. Ah, okay, yeah, okay, okay, something okay. like this. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah, the autofill is annoying sometimes when the paths are wrong and I accidentally hit enter and I go to the wrong place. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that can happen actually. <laughs> uh, that, 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 that. Uh, 
the plug. Is this big enough? Or? Yeah, I it's okay. How in the slides, you said, you, you were trying to read that quote. It says, can I use RCCP in VSC? Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> and then you go and use RCCP yeah. in VSC. <laughs> That's why I was asking the question. <laughs> um, like actually, I, I, was, I, I have it in there because of this. But I think he means Visual Studio and not ah. Visual Studio Code. Ah, they are different. Yeah, they are different. I I don't know Visual Studio because I'm on a Mac, but I, I think there is no Visual Studio for Mac or oh, is there? I don't know. No, they should have. I guess. Oh, yeah. oh, I read for some reason. I read a Visual Studio Code. Yeah, yeah, me too. I <laughs> I, re I realized just now that hey, yeah. that's not that's even what... funny. <laughs> That's why I was asking you, like, are you gonna use R Studio? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe he meant uh, Visual Studio Code, but I think he means Visual Studio. I, I, I don't know. I don't know even what Visual or, Studio does. Or maybe actually. probably it doesn't support um, RCCP before, but now you can see yeah. there's a lot of development of uh, using yeah. R in VS Code. Uh, I mean, it should. It's Microsoft. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, Visual Studio Code is also Microsoft, though. No, well, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about R. So wh why wouldn't they do the? What R is is Microsoft? No, they have Microsoft R, right? Yeah. So like they have the. Why wouldn't they develop? So like, R, my, uh, Microsoft, I guess Visual Studio Code's abstraction of R should be like amazing because R Microsoft maintains like a. A, a version of R, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Bo. They don't but, actually give it. Yeah. I I I I mean, I don't know what what's what's actually Visual Studio Code. What what is um, that's what what you. Is it special for one language or can you also write multiple languages? For what, in VSC? Yeah, in, in Visual Studio, not Visual Studio. Oh, Visual Studio. Studio. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. No, I think Visual Studio is, I thought that was just like its own language. Is I have it no idea. Own language? I, I don't know. Neither. No clue. Okay, um, so, so our goal is to write um, a C++ infix function that in. Oh, apparently Visual Studio is a, is a um, licensed version that you have to buy, but it's, a, it's an editor. Is it a simple code it's editor? IDE. It's, it's the IDE. same as an IDE, yeah, it's, a, mm. it's just it's licensed for Microsoft. But why should I use Visual Studio and not Visual Studio Code? Because code is free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, nah, yeah. And, and, it's, and it's open source. So it's, you can like, you can, anyone can create an extension and yeah. put it on Microsoft's uh, repo. But I think Visual Studio is just Microsoft only, right? Yeah, but like PyCharm, um, you can also create an extension. But R in PyCharm is so, f I mean, so good, um, more than the VS Code. Mm -hmm. But also, oh, you you use PyCharm instead of VSC? Yeah, yeah, I use by I, I use <laughs> the PyCharm is so like um, memory eater is so hungry. So when I own it, you will see that it takes like two gigram sometimes. I mean three, so I just stopped using it. But Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was that's what I was gonna say. I was like, yeah, PyCharm was like, I don't know. I I just now use VSC for everything. Yeah, except me too. for R. Except for R, I still have not convinced myself to switch from R Studio. Yeah. It's not as memory intensive as PyCharm was. I stopped. Yeah, Hannes, Hannes helped me the last two weeks to help to set up my VS Code to run the R our season Python, but now I don't run. <laughs> Are also in the yeah. Wait, so we, how is how was the R experience in VSC? Yeah, same not or? as much as for me R Studio actually. Yeah, because R Studio has all of the 
the, ex the extensions, like the integrations in the IDE for like, for example, like the add-ins, like you can't really get that in VSE or can you? Like yeah, for you sure. can. In so, so I have add-ins. So I um, uh, can't remember which, but you have launch R Studio add-ins. So you can actually call R Studio yeah. add-ins. But because um, the whole thing uses misuses a little bit our, our studio API, so mm -hmm. you can use that stuff. Nice. Uh, so the only thing I don't like is uh, our markdown. Oh, why? <laughs> no, I mean our, our markdown in, in, in VS Code. Yeah. Ah, uh -huh, okay. You you can write it here and it works, but it's it it's not as nice as. Mm -hmm. uh, but I never use um, R Markdown, so yeah. Uh, so, all right. So, this. okay. So we have the R, some R function that you just whipped up. Yeah. In two minutes. Yeah. What is this? Hey, so, needle. Yeah. So, so I said I, I just want to make a in uh, operator in C plus plus. So that's, that's just um, a, a catcher for the in function. So if, if, I, if I run this, the infix r, I can give it one vector and then another vector, and it will return me everything with what's in the second vector. It'll return what from the second vector is in the first vector? No, only, uh, so it's a haystack and a needle, that's a common problem and the haystack is more or less you are you have anything in there and your needle is what you want to return mm. oh got you so it's it's this it's basically simply this got you got you got you got you, got you. And, and and this one this one is only um so i subset it so i want this result i don't want the true yep. and false because when i uh, would, would yep. use it like this, I would get a true true first. Makes sense. Yeah. And so that's that's simply a catcher for this function. So I can use it in the benchmark. Then I, this this one, this the yeah, as this 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 sources of C plus file and it com com compiles it on loading. So when I do this, okay, now it draws the arrow because it's not finished, but it will compile it. So it, it will compile the C++ and then uh, load it in here. Uh, this one is just that we have a little bit more because um, now my haystacks, haystack looks like this and my, my needle looks like this. So I want to compare uh, I want to search where something like this is in my haystack. Mm. That's, I think okay. that's like something like you would do in genetics. If you have a big, um, for example, if you're looking for specific triplets or chain locations, you have a big thousands, millions of rows and you would look for some specific uh, triplets or locations. Yeah. Mm. So I would think about it this way. Um, I don't know if actually the C++ code would be quicker because I think this this one is quite um, yeah performant. <laughs> pretty fast. I think even yeah. for a thousand. Yeah, yeah, because that's really yeah just a few microseconds. But yeah, so at the top, um, I start with uh, loading. Uh, C++ 2011 functions because we use a different um, loop because I really like this and I will show you how it looks. And now this this one was your question. So this this code here will look for the header of C++. Um, it should find it. it. It needs a little bit time. Yeah, now it found it. So now you see it. He loaded it and uh, it needs a little bit done. That this works like this, I had to fiddle a little bit around because automatically 
it does not know where the header file is, but I like to use auto completion. So I, I filled around to get it working here, but yeah. I also want to include another Z for our hash map. Um, and we will using the namespace. So we don't have to write every time RCPP. Da, da, da. So that's our header finished. You can think about this like library uh, RCPP, et cetera, et cetera. Next up is this special um, function or comment. And this one, like I said, ever the next function after this will be exported into um, into R. So you have to write it exactly like this, otherwise it won't work. Um, then we have to define a function. Um, I have letters here, so we will do a character vector. That's what I meant, it's auto completion now for me, so that's really helpful. Um, and it takes a character vector of, um, let's stick to the same as here, haystack and character vector nil. And I want to return a result. So I, I always begin like this. So <laughs> um, that, that you also know, like this, I can also use to, to find everything in there. So that's really helpful. Yeah. And, and I can walk like this and define a result. So at the moment, the function does actually nothing, but we should be able to import it, hopefully. You see, it takes a little bit time. That's because it compiles it. And now if I call infix C, we see that the function exists. It knows, R knows that it's here and it points to a pointer in the memory. So the function itself is compiled in the memory. Okay, so that's really cool. So we have written some C code, simply imported like this really. It can't get more easily. If you have ever written C++ without any tools like this, you think, oh, and you can I straight. Don't get, I don't get it though. What? So in your, so you had to export, you have to run line nine so that the infix R function is exported. Uh, again, what? Oh, no, wait, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to understand. So, so so this side I understand is R. this. I understand the the R part. Yeah. But how the export on this, like, okay, so you have on line seven a character vector. You've defined infix C. That's the function. Yeah. Yeah, and then so character vector. So you're telling you're telling it, okay, expect a character vector a argument haystack character vector argument needle. Mm -hmm. And then what is the chunk in can nothing you explain? actually? It, oh. It's just it's just defining a result and then it returning to result. So I get nothing back. Oh, so this function doesn't do anything yet. No, it just returns an empty result. I just wanted to show you that uh, it compiles. That's really good to, to do sometimes. <laughs> a, a small example. And it compiles and it loads into R. And it loads into R because of this, if because of the source CPP. So that's, um, that's the helper. That's, that lets you pass a C++ file. Um, do we need to use that RCCP inside the function? Yeah, this RCCP, do we need to use that inside this function? This Line nine? Line nine. No, 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 no. You can also write it like this. You mean this? No, 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 no. The C plus plus code. Oh, C plus plus. No, yeah. no, no. That's that's namespace. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mean. Uh, it also says namespace R C C P. It's it's the same. It's the same as an R. Really, it's the same. It's like I can write this. But you've already loaded it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same here if you're saying using namespace. Mm -hmm. 
So sometimes I really like to down do this, but I would have to write everywhere here as CPP. And that's for everything I would have to write it. Okay. So it, it's the same in R. Sometimes it's useful. And I mm. try I try really to do it as often as possible because I don't know if you have the experience, but for me it happens so often that it's the same naming convention and you sometimes it doesn't work because you loaded the library in the wrong order. So yeah. yeah. And in, in VS code, that's a bit, little bit of a problem or a little bit of problem. So I don't get auto completion like this. So I, it, he does not know that source code exists. And if I do like this, I get auto completion. So I really like to be, yeah, to, to say yeah. where it comes from. I don't think, yeah, it doesn't hurt to be explicit. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You are co completely right. I mean, you probably should stick to one <laughs> variant. I don't know. I mix it all the time. But yeah. I can't say if it's good or not. Okay. Um, I have the result. Okay, hash map. A hash map is a little bit difficult. So the unordered set comes from the uh, standard library. So I have here unordered set. And it, this is a little bit special about um, C++. You, you have to define the types here. And because I don't predefine the unordered set type, I have to uh, define which input type it is. And it's a string. So it's a character vector, so it's a string. Uh, the needle should be our hash map. Actually, the haystack would make more sense, but then I cannot loop our weight. So in this case, we say that needle is our haystack. And that's rather easy at the end because this code now, a little bit. So what this now set says is, okay, create an unordered set named needle set. So that's, a, that's an unordered set. And it should contain everything from the beginning of the needle till the end of the needle. So everything from the start of the character vector till the end of the character vector. Um, what is the STD? That's, that's the standard library, which I talked about. and I, you, I don't have to write it. That's again the same. Mm. In, in, in R, something like a standard library would be like this. Got you, okay. That's, but, but most of the time you don't write base, I would expect. I don't know. I think I never write base functions. But, no. Yeah. no. But here it's sometimes helpful. Again, I really like it because of the auto-completion. Um, yeah. So that's our hash map. Um, um, the thing about hash maps is it's it's kind of, yeah. Actually, I don't understand it quite it, but it's it's a memory hash table. So it's a lot quicker to search in, in this. But yeah, I'm, I'm no computer science. Okay. Yeah, no programmer by life, more or less. Um, then, like I said, I, I want to use a different um, looping algorithms. So there are things like iterators. He talks in the book about it and they really like them and I miss them in R because I don't know if they exist. So an iterator is something which you can loop over it and you would define it simply as, um, so we want to loop over our haystack. So I define the starting point of our iterator as the haystack beginning vector, okay? That's my starting point. As I said, in the middle part, you have a condition and I would loop as long as it's not the end point of the character vector. So it will loop over the character vector from the beginning till it, it reaches the end. And 
I can simply say each time uh, advance one forward in the iterator. And the big advantage of stuff like this iterator is now I can access this right like this and it will give me the output. Uh, it will give me will give me the current value of the loop. Um, it's also in other programming languages and you have it in map. When you write a map in R, your, your loop value will be, so if you map over a vector, each loop will be your value. I hope I explained it correctly. And, and here you can use a loop like this and it will now not be a number, so not a position. It will be actually the value in your iterator. But yeah, just keep on working. Um, so the iterator part is um, a 2011 feature, I think. Auto is another 2011 feature. Uh, normally you have to predefine um, something with integer, double, etc., etc. Auto is a little bit a catch call. You don't know what to expect. It can be everything. So you can use auto. And I use auto here because I don't know what I get out of an uh, unordered set, if it's an integer or something special. I actually don't know it. So what I write here is now, um, I have I have my needle set, that's the hash map. And I want to find um, the current value. And this will return me a position if it where it found um, the value in the needle set. It's a position, so it's not actually the value. So I have to go further down um, and I have to say, so I explain it. I have to see if search is not needle send end. And here that's a little bit that special because end here, uh, it says here, where the answer read only constant iterator that points one past the last element in the unordered set. So if it cannot find this value in the hash map, it will return you a number higher than the last point. So that's why this works. It, it took me a little bit to, to understand it, but actually it finds something or it, it, it gives you a position, but the position is not in your haystack. And then you know it's if it's it's a if the position is bigger or is it's it's not till the end, it will be your result. That's uh, yeah, I'll just write further, we can then talk about it. So the takeaway point is if it's not this, we found it. Okay. And we can push our result in our, uh, we can push, we can push our iterator in our result because if this condition is, um, is like this, it's, it's over the end. And if not, it's a result, it's a positive result. Okay, that's the condition. And then we return the result. So, and push back simply um, adds to your um, character vector. And as I said, in, in, um, in C++, it does not matter that you don't predefine the length of your result. You, it's, it's not so big of a deal in C++ as in R. So let's check it. So I have to run again the source CCP function. Now it takes quite a while. Okay, I did 
not get an error message that really that's really good uh, and it should work just test it um, now it should return me eight yeah so it works now we do a benchmark between these two Damn it. Okay. So we all know benchmark uh, will return, uh, will only give you a result if it's uh, exactly the same, actually. So somewhere, how is that? I'm quite sure that this is correct. Could not find the needle. It's the haystack and needle, haystack and needle. At least I could compile it. My, my biggest fear was that it doesn't work at all. <laughs> Let's make it a little bit simpler. And searches. Why does it not? Oh, okay. Because the characters? No, no, no. It should not work. Yeah. I, I had the true force. In my R function. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see how it. Yeah, sadly it's slower, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But but it's not that bad, actually. Yeah, 690 microseconds different. So, yeah, that's not, not so bad. Oh, wait, that's minimum. And it's, it's less memory. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Man. If, I need those extra 32 kilobytes. Ah, you never know. I mean, that's not the ETR example for a hash map. Actually, I, I think it would be quicker if we do a hash map on the haystack, but both are the same size. Ah, I don't know. It would be good if we could compare the haystack overall, but yeah. I can't think of a better way, but yeah. That's crazy. Did you like, Memorize this entire function. Um, I did a similar one um, in the example thing. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would have messed it up entirely. <laughs> but no, it's that it's was a really not... good demo. You yeah. actually understand it. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it, it's the same as you would write an R function. It's like when you know and. I mean, okay, it looks a little bit different, but overall, I would think that it, it, if you know a little bit code, you can understand what's happening, I would say. Yeah, it's not terrible. The only place where you kind of lost me is the... Yeah, this one. Yeah, the, yeah. It, well, the, the, the plus plus IT and then star IT and, and then the... Oh, this one. Okay. Well, like just the end like i don't know like that kind of notation and yeah. then and then the that if statement that inside of the for loop yeah yeah, yeah. i don't get that yeah, yeah but but it, it also didn't work for me and i did remember it because i think it took me an hour to to understand how i can find something in a, in a unordered set and how i would learn it so it, it wasn't that easy for me also because I had to read what it, it also, it, it, it says in the help, but you have to understand what, what he means with it's one past the end. So what does mean one past the end? So that's, that's, that's why I use here auto because I tried everything. I tried, I think, integer, everything, and it didn't work. So it, 
it already tells me it's not does not work so i couldn't figure out what what even i get out here <laughs> yeah. so it, it's not that straightforward for me and um i'm no c um plus plus expert I, I have written a bigger C++ uh, project, I think eight years ago, where I have programmed some microcontrollers, but that was just for fun. And it was more like, oh, it compiles, oh, it compiles not. And, and the biggest thing is when you are, like example, I, I forget here um, a semicolon and you want to compile it, you get an error, which is okay. This this one is straightforward, so expect that at this position. Yeah. But often these errors are really not understandable at all. And and so are a lot of R functions. There are a lot of R errors. You yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, just yeah. left no, not really knowing. So okay. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about C++ and the takeaway, what I want to give you is that if you're writing a C++ function, this package is really, really awesome. Because as you saw, I can, I can use a character vector from R into C++ and also back. So you don't have a mid, the middleman is managed. So it really works straightforward. And, and that's yeah. the good part. Do and you think don't... that the, do you think like one of the main use cases, well, I know you had a slide on use cases, but it would, would you say the main use case would be iteration? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, the, the whole, um, what's it called? The MCMC, the Markov chain thingy. That's, that's like okay. iteration, which depends on the previous iteration, or more or less. Okay. As far as I understand it, I, I'm, like I said, I, I know nothing about machine learning, but um, for, for me, Markov chain is something he needs to know where he was previously. So it depends on the mm -hmm. uh, previous position. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why I think or I believe most of that stuff is written in C++ because, yeah. Of course, there are special algorithms probably for this because that's something which is used by millions of people. So, yeah. But, but you, if you would write it in R, you would have to write more or less um, a loop because you cannot vectorize something like this. Because if you vectorize something, you don't, you have parallel output and don't have your previous iteration. Yeah. At least that's that's my, um, yeah, my 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 thinking. Uh, what I think also is if you have lots of recursive calls, uh, calls, like if you want to create something like the metal board structure. It's like you call yourself, you call yourself, you call yourself. That's probably right. something. And of course, there are data structures. And um, that's why I picked this example. Of, that's why I wanted to learn more about this is because of the hash map, because I think um, I don't have a hash map. And this example with the hash map is actually um, some something which uh, is really often how is it? It's really often a problem to find something really fast. Okay. I believe in lots of data analysis, this is a big uh, time thing to find something if you have a big, big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I have a colleague that he works in informatics and he's yeah. was he's like complained a lot about having to um, write functions in C++ for, uh, for, for simulation purposes. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
So that's the point where I hope I don't have to get to, but now I know. It works. <laughs> Thanks, Hannes, for the great presentation. Hey, we're done, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and, I don't have yeah. to see you all anymore. <laughs> <laughs> JK. I know I'll probably see Hannes yeah. and you Sam, and other group and other book clubs. And yeah. you I think that oh, was my okay. first and only one. Huh? I think that was my first and only book one, uh, book club. The event star? Yeah. I started tidy models and then I dropped out midway because my schedule got too busy. Yeah. But I think I'm gonna start back up again. But John just announced the uh, introduction to statistical learning yeah. application. That's the one I could, that's been on my reading list for like three three years. Yeah. And I feel like if I had read that before jumping into tidy models, I probably yeah would yeah it. sure you're right. And mm -hmm. John is also on his top of the list, right? The statistical. <laughs> what one? Yeah. Which one? John also um, likes the book. Yeah. Yeah, I've read that book before. I'll probably join the uh at the book club there so yeah you've read it See already that. yeah i read it a couple years ago but ah you should moderate okay. it yeah maybe maybe <laughs> yeah all but right it means you have to join every book club meeting i mean right. moderating uh, is what no. just showing face that's it right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe Layla, you, you, you maybe Sam says uh, while thinking I will never moderate a book club ever again. <laughs> you may jump in and moderate the book club so that you <laughs> so I can commit, yeah. Yeah, you can commit. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know what my schedule is like next semester. That's what I'm afraid of because I'm starting my program in like three weeks and I still don't know what my schedule is gonna look like. So I might be a hectic. Working. I think my my next book would be tidy text and that's what I, that's that's for sure going to be my own my my next book sham um because I have to know it for my program so I'm like gonna I'm actually gonna start it but I was gonna do it by myself like I'm not gonna wait for a book club to to a cohort to start but mm -hmm. um I need to learn um like NLP yeah that's the sure. Julia Sogi D rock book uh, text mining with R. Yeah, that one, and then the um, the sequel. The yeah, see, yeah, the new book, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's my top of my list right now. I want to. We want to. Um, we talk. Um, uh, we discuss with John. Was saying, okay, let's do the um the um the tidy text mining first. Then we jump to the uh. Hannes, are you suggesting we learn TypeScript? <laughs> I just wonder that's 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 maybe what I what is thinking. TypeScript, by the way. It's another oh. scripting language like JavaScript. Oh. Okay. It's yeah, it's it's JavaScript. Or it's mm. it compiles down to JavaScript to a better okay. um it's it's okay. cleaner to write something like this and then it combines yeah. to JavaScript. I've been told like if you're going to learn scripting, learn TypeScript, not JavaScript. Oh, really? That's what somebody told us. Like what uh, one of my former colleagues told me. Okay. TypeScript is so much better and so much nicer. But yeah. why, Hannes? Why? <laughs> uh, mo most of it is that it's it's a little bit not a little bit. It's 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 what what everyone likes is the type correctness. So it's the same as in, in C++, you have to predefine your output, input, et cetera. You can create your own type classes. So it, it's, um, it's really easy to program because um, everything is um, what's auto-completed if you write your types and um, it really fits good together. So I, I like it if I know if I specify, define how something looks in the output, input, et cetera. So, mm. yeah. And it's really fun to write because I love uh, JavaScript. Um, I think JavaScript is really fun to write. And, and TypeScript, you can also write simple JavaScript in there. So mix it in. Do you need to know one for the other? 
Uh, I would still uh, believe it's a good thing to start with a basic JavaScript. Uh, so, and then go in straight into TypeScript. There's so many things I want to learn. There's that JavaScript for R that Maya was talking about. I think she wrote, right? Yeah, she and uh, and somebody else. Yeah. But my priorities is tidy text modeling, and then the ISLR, uh -huh, formally too, formally yeah, ISLR, informally tidy text. Uh -huh. So Mariella, what's what's your next book? <laughs> It's it's gonna be my thesis. <laughs> yeah. so, so you're writing a whole book for your thesis. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. Nice. Let's see. Okay. okay. All right. What about John? What's your next book? Um, we're reading like a bunch of stuff right now. I want to get it into machine learning. Like, I want to make a career switch there. So. Okay reading more Bayesian statistics stuff. So I finished right. the book in R. Uh, but yeah, reading more about like machine learning techniques. That's what I'm doing. So okay, you're also nice. going to learn Rust? Or... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, it was a really a nice ride and good read. Um, uh, thank you for all the contribution presenters. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can yeah. say I can finally say I've completed a book. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it count if I didn't actually read the chapter, but just listen to the presentation. Yeah. So no. yeah. Hopefully so, we meet in yeah. another book. <laughs> so it, overall, like with the last chapter at the, the C it was really a lot of content. So if you're absolutely not interested in this, I, I don't say you have to read it after the presentation because it's really a lot of content and it's really specialized. So, yeah. But that was, I think that was with most of the book chapters. So if you don't can use it, especially, it was really deep sometimes. Oh yeah, for sure. But for the most part, I think I followed from, it was like the last, handful of chapters where I just kind of like oh, nah. I don't know but Hannes you did a good job yeah <laughs> like my finger caught like what what is this what is this called again <laughs> snap your finger <laughs> yeah like like that oh like God. the good job you did for your students that they give a, a very positive recommendation to you like that mm -hmm. no i'm pretty i'm talking about for Anis for his for all the chapters that he presented he had like yeah. five yeah five they were very good so okay. you all did a good job <laughs> thanks all right thank you all <laughs> um hope to see you guys in another book club and uh, to learn together and happy learning together with you thanks Anis. thank john thank Leila. thanks mariella Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Ciao, ciao. Have a good one. Bye. 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 Bye.